Hi, my name is Dr. Daniel Fox, and in this video, I'm going to discuss the difference between old data and new data as it relates to cluster B personality disorders, and those are antisocial, borderline, narcissistic, and histrionic personality disorders. Now, I'll be out traveling soon with PESI, and I hope that you'll come out to one of my seminars, but if you can't, well, there's also webcasts that are a lot of times live. There's also uh, DVDs and streaming. So if you want to get the material, there's a lot of different ways that you can get it and uh, learn more about these challenging and complex personality disorders. But I can also help you through my workbooks designed to help clinicians work more effectively with their clients with personality disorders. So let's get into talking about this old data versus new data. Uh, I'll talk about this in my seminars as well, but I just want to give you a little piece here, a little bit of information for you. Borderline personality disorder used to be seen as an untreatable disorder, but data, certainly more recent, and I find this to be true in my clinical experience as well, is that this is a treatment-seeking group in which there is actually high remission rates, which is about 45% by two years, 85% by 10 years, with remission being defined as uh, two or more diagnostic criteria being met for at least 12 months. So that's really good, and a lot of times we don't even think about that. And there's also a low relapse rate, which is about 15%. This is really hopeful and promising, but I think a lot of times we get stuck in the past with the old data, that old data that said this was an untreatable group. Now let's talk about narcissistic personality disorder. I think we expect this overt and grandiose type and consistency in the presentation, but the research actually shows that most individuals that are along the narcissistic spectrum enter treatment displaying more of a covert, vulnerable form of narcissism. But as their self-esteem and issues begin to resolve, over and grandiose symptoms start to emerge, and we get what I like to call the narcissistic surprise, leading to a lot of power struggles and other issues that we discuss in my seminar books related to narcissistic personality disorder. What about histrionic personality disorder? Now this personality disorder tends to be on the low end of the borderline personality disorder spectrum, and symptoms often overlap with antisocial personality disorder, which a lot surprises a lot of folks. And this tends to be due to the impulsivity, manipulative tendencies, and that novelty seeking that we see in clients that, uh, that have histrionic personality disorder, histrionic personality disorder traits, as well as those that are along the antisocial spectrum. So that tends to be that overlap, and that can be a bit of a surprise for the clinician as well. And the last one that we'll talk about here and uh, for cluster B is antisocial personality disorder. Now for individuals along this spectrum, the earlier we can start intervention, the better. The research shows there are limbic system abnormalities in those who meet criteria for psychopathy. So in my seminars and in my books, we talk about psychopathy as well. And we examine uh, the antisocial spectrum starting from the oppositional defiant disorder all the way to psychopathy. And I think knowing that there is a limbic system difference and that their brains are different, the earlier we can, we can work with this group, the better, so that because their bra brains are more plastic, that we can have a greater therapeutic impact and hopefully lessen or change that trajectory on that antisocial personality disorder road, so to speak. Well, I hope you found this useful, and I hope to see you at one of my seminars. And, of course, I'm always available by email if you have any questions. And thank you very much for your time, and have a great day. Bye-bye.